Hello, welcome to What's Up in the 90s, and we've got a great show for you today, and, and Tina put this together for us, and, and Brian stuck it along with Tina Haynes, and Tina, uh, what do you got for us today? Well, you know, Brian, we've got some great guests today. We've got, um, we've got some representatives from the um, California Tall Clubs. We have Sid Crampton, who is the publicity director uh, with the Golden Gate Tip Toppers, and we also have Susan McCullough. She's with the South Bay Tall Club. And we're going to talk about tall awareness today and, and talk about some of the issues and the, and the history behind the clubs um, that have been very supportive uh, for these ladies and men in the, in the clubs. And um, I'm going to start with Susan. Tell us a little bit about the history of tall clubs, uh, specifically in this area, and uh, maybe a little bit about Tall Clubs International and how it got started and why. Well, the first cl tall club was started about 50 years ago by a woman named Kay Einfeld that drew dwarfs for the um, Walt Disney Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. She got tired of um, a small world for taller people, cars that just didn't quite, she didn't quite fit in, and uh, a variety of other things. And she decided to write a letter to uh, the New York Times and uh, address other tall people. How long ago was this that she did this? About 50 years ago. About 50 years ago it started. Right. It, it's ironic that she was drawing dwarfs at the time, huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, started that time ago and, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... Right. It involved. started uh, about that time she got together a small group of people and uh, it just started growing and growing and uh, our small club that we have, I'm from the South Bay Hall Club, it's only about 12 years old but it's an off branch of the Golden Gate Tip Toppers where Sid's from in the San Francisco area. And how many members do you have in the South Bay Hall Club? Currently we have 190 members and it's pretty evenly divided. There's about 20 more women than there are men. This, uh, we've also got Sid Crampton with us, who's a publicity director um, for the, uh, is it the Tip Toppers? Golden Gate Tip Toppers, Golden Gate right. Tip Toppers. And, and Sid, uh, what I was wondering is if we've got three women along with Rose Cardiff, who's, who's the Miss Tall International, who'll be joining us in the second half. Um, we've got all women here today, but is this, this isn't just exclusively for women, or is it? No, it's not. It's funny you should bring that up, because we were uh, uh, on a radio interview today, and the same question came up, is this a club just for women? And uh, I, I should say, yes, it is. And, and so, you know, more men would, would come to the, to, to the dances. But no, it's for men and women, uh, for women who are 5, 10 and taller, men who are 6 foot 2 and taller, and they all have to be 21 years of age and older. And uh, there's, uh, the clubs have really found a resurgence here in Northern California in the last couple of years. I know Bob and Susan McCullough have really built up the San Jose uh, South Bay Tall Club to excellent membership now. And we're, we're getting more and more involved in the publicity aspect of the clubs and promoting things and getting involved in charitable concerns, that kind of thing. So it's, it's getting pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So anybody can join just as long as they're 5'10 for women and 6'2 for men? Right, right, exactly. There's, there's no other stipulations, you know. They, uh, uh, they, you don't have to go through a battery of personality tests or anything <laughs> like that. They'll accept you. <laughs> Great. So that's how you met your husband, Susan? Uh, yes, actually I met him about eight years ago. And uh, I didn't join the club to meet my husband. I originally am from a small town called San Juan Batista, which is south of Gilroy. And um, I, believe it or not, am one of the taller people in the area. And I was quite shy growing up and going to high school. And I decided after graduating from high school that I would like to change. And sometimes in a very small town, that's really hard to do. So my parents had met through the Golden Gate Tip Toppers, which is the San Francisco affiliate, affiliation of, of Tall Clubs International, and they suggested that I get involved with the South Bay Club, which I did, and it provided the perf perfect opportunity to open up and just be with tall people and, and socialize and be a, a new person, and I really, really enjoyed myself. And. Uh, at that time, uh, I had the opportunity of representing the club as Miss Tall South Bay, which uh, this person gets to travel on to the Miss Tall International pageant. And uh, I did it for fun, just to do something new and to go out and, and be that person that goes out and promotes 
the cause, um, being tall and being around tall people. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a great deal of fun. And at, at that time, my husband was the president of the club. And uh, basically, he, uh, he didn't give up. He uh, courted me, and, and he won. <laughs> and then we got married, and now we have two beautiful kids. We have a son that's now going to be five years old in February and a daughter that's going to be two. How tall are the kids now? Um, well, they've always been on the top part of the growth chart my son has, but my daughter is exceptionally so. She has not even reached the top part of the growth chart, which um, is exciting, but a little bit scary because um, I know what it was like growing up being tall, and sometimes it's a little hard being different. So from a support standpoint, you found that a tall club was very instrumental in building confidence and, and that type of stuff. What, what type of stuff do you get out of being in a tall club outside of you know, the, the height requirements? What, what is, why is it rewarding? Let's start there, Sid. I think the best thing is the fact that nobody refers to you as being tall. I mean, you, you talk about someone in the club and they say, oh, who, who are you talking about? And you cannot describe someone as being, oh, that tall person. <laughs> because it fits everyone in it. So you don't really, you don't really concentrate on, on that, you know, that being an, an aspect of the person there. Unless you're tallest. Right, right. You know, there's always going to be well, The <laughs> tallest always, one yeah. over there. It's always fun, you know, when they say really, really tall, you know, that, and that, that it's usually refers to a seven-footer. I mean, you have to be uh -huh. that tall to be really tall. So there, that kind of thing, you have the, the shared... I don't, I've never found it uh, to be difficult to be tall because I had very tall parents. And they were the ones who were always, you know, slapping me on the back and making sure that I would stand tall and, you know, reinforcing that there was nothing wrong being tall, you were being exceptional, so that wasn't a problem. So it's fun to be around like individuals. You know, we can share the same kind of pratfalls that, that we all experience and find a lot of humor in it and a great deal of camaraderie. These people are, are crazy. They just, they're, they're a fun group. <laughs> they really are. I would think that, like, if you're a non-member, you, you don't meet the requirements. Like, I would meet the requirements. You don't measure up, right? And uh, <laughs> that's, that's and it's, uh, you know, it, 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 from someone who's not tall, you would think that, that the reason why this club is put together is just because tall people have a chance to meet each other, but they just have a good time. But there's a serious side to it, sure. I would think. And, and what, what would uh, be some of those well, things? Well, you know, like, like Susan was talking about before, some of the initial things were to get the auto manufacturers to understand that there were people out there that were larger than five foot eight. Uh, the airline uh, to understand that they needed uh, seating that would accommodate people with legs that were longer than two feet long. Um, and then, of course, clothing. Uh, all of these things were some of the, the early things that the clubs did to, uh, uh, to make life easier for a tall club so that uh, rather than our bodies having to fit into a small world, they were making products that would fit the tall body. Uh, we also support a, a charity called Marfan Foundation. And uh, Marfan is basically a, a disease of the connective tissue, and one of the major connective tissues in your body that, that rely on connective tissue is your heart. When the, when the heart does pump, it relies on tendons and ligaments to control the, that muscle movement. And those people, that, muscle, that connective tissue deteriorates and it becomes less elastic and they have heart problems and also respiratory problems. You mentioned a couple of uh, athletes. Very notable people would be Hank Gathers from uh, Loyola Marymount who died while playing mm -hmm. a few years ago. And then Flo Hyman who was an All-American volleyball player and was a professional volleyball player in Japan died while, while playing volleyball. Both of them had Marfans, and uh, Kate Sumner Einfeld, who's the founder of our club, suffers from Marfan. I, I want to take you right back to uh, some of the reasons why the, the group is supportive. Real quickly, you mentioned um, services and, and organizations that have not allowed for, you know, the length or the height requirements for a car and things like that. Are you seeing it, a change in that? Oh, no question. I mean, With has it really evolved a lot over the past couple of years, or? I, I mean, airplanes to me are small for me, and oh, yeah. I'm 5'3". And I still, I still request <laughs> yeah. an aisle seat. Yeah. Absolutely. If I can, I'll get the exit uh, doorway because there is a little bit more space there, and so mm -hmm. I'm not chomping on my knees when I sit down. But clothing, I mean, you can buy things off the rack now that you never could before. I'm, I'm able to buy a suit off the rack that fits, and I don't have to alter it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's big. That's, and, and, and shoes, same thing. But how, how well do you think it progressed and how quickly? I mean, the tall clubs have been around for 53 years or so, and tall stores have not been around that long, have they? Yeah, sure. Have they really? Oh, sure. They started? Yeah. Uh, Shelley's uh, has been around uh, for quite some time, and then there's uh, Lane Bryant used to have a tall division, not anymore, 
but Rochester's, you know, Rochester's uh, those kinds fine. of things. And now you're seeing uh, catalogs that have tall sizes. That's true. You can select mm -hmm. the, the inseam length mm -hmm. uh, and are built for, for the taller frame. Susan, real quickly, um, uh, we're going to be taking a break here shortly, but I, I wanna, we're not going to be able to spend too much time with you. So I, I, well, how was it growing up when you, you when, if you felt like being tall was a, was, uh, did you have a complex growing up that you might be too tall? What, what's it feel like? Well, not really. The only time I had a problem was when uh, a little old lady would come up to me and say, my God, honey, you're so big, or, or <laughs> dating a, a shorter gentleman. Oh my, um, my mom, who's six feet, would never, never allow it, or every time I did, you look like a moose, honey. So anytime anybody pointed that out to me, um, and also the time when I went to my senior prom, I, I dated a very nice gentleman who was an inch taller than I was and asked, if, if I would go, would I please not wear any shoes? So, how tall are you, Susan? Instances like that. I'm only five ten, and I'm actually the shortest one in the club, which is odd. So. <laughs> the shortest yeah. member of the club. Now, right. truthfully, did they lower the requirements so you can get in there? So I can get in there. Yeah. Um, what, are the, what are the requirements again? To five ten. Five okay. ten. They, she right. just made it. The original <laughs> club, the California club, which is the one that Kay started, their height requirements still are six foot for women and six foot okay. four for so. men. On that note, we're gonna we're gonna break right here for a commercial, um, and when we come back, we're gonna have Rose Carnup, who's Miss Tall International, join us. But we'd like to thank our sponsors today, which include California Mortgage, and um, give them the number, Bry. Five five nine zero one hundred. If you're looking for a refinance, great time to refinance or uh, purchase. Please give us a call at California Mortgage with the Prune Yard uh, Tower and Campbell. We'll be right back. This message from President Bush and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. <laughs> Here's one of nature's most awe-inspiring sights. The sky filled with thousands of migrating ducks and geese. So that Americans will always be able to enjoy this great spectacle, buy duck stamps. Because for more than 50 years, federal duck stamps have generated the money to set aside more than 4 million acres of marshes, swamps, and coastal estuaries. They provided places for these great birds to nest, feed, and rest during their annual journeys. America's migratory waterfowl are some of our most beloved wildlife. You can help ensure that our waterfowl will have a home. To find out more, write Duck Stamp, Washington, D.C., 20240 for a free brochure. Let's help preserve our precious wildlife. Welcome back to What's Up the 90s. I'm Tina Haynes, and I'm here with Brian Stuckey. And we're talking about tall awareness today. We've got Rose Carnduff, Miss Tall International, here with us today. And we also have the first runner-up, Sid Crampton. And we've been just talking about some of the, the issues that these ladies have had to deal with growing up being tall and um, how they have found support and um, a real nice social background to work with uh, people with the same height that, they're, that they are. So. I'm going to let Sid actually talk about um, Miss Tall International and how Rose actually received this award because uh, she is the first runner-up, <laughs> and it'll be interesting to hear what the criteria is and um, uh, how that all took place. The uh, competition was in uh, July, July 2nd here in uh, San, San, San Mateo at the Dunphy Hotel uh, uh, for the for this year's pageant, and it's not a beauty pageant per se. We never called it a beauty pageant. It was just a pageant. And really what they're selecting is a, a spokesperson for the tall clubs who goes around the country and uh, participates in the different weekends that the different tall clubs have. Um, this particular pageant was unusual in that uh, not only did we have a Canadian win the pageant, but the same winner also won Miss Congeniality. She's a very oh. congenial person. Now, you guys had to win locally before you Yes, could, right. Um, so she was, you were tall Toronto Towers? Miss Tall Toronto Towers. Toronto Towers, yes. and, I was, and I was Miss Tall San Francisco. And um, so the pageant gets down to, you know, we had 20 entrants in the entire contest, and we do a section that is a, uh, um, a ball gown. You have to walk up and down without tripping, and you have to <laughs> present yourself, and you have to also do a, a talent part. And then after that's done, they do a, a selection of the five finalists, and you go into the question and answer session. Uh, they had, they had, didn't they announce Miss Congeniality in, in between? Uh, actually, in advance of all the finalists right. being called. Right, 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 exactly. So, so that's a whole other award. Right, that's presented by the girls. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Women. 
women. Thank women. you. The women the ladies. of your or own organization? Yeah, the, the contestants. The contestants. Just the contestants. Mm -hmm. So she bought off all the other contestants. <laughs> 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 how, many, how many contestants were there again? 20. 20 contestants. 20, yeah. um, and then uh, so the five finalists were announced, and it was uh, Rose and myself and the woman from Orange County, the woman from Pittsburgh, and the woman from Philadelphia. And uh, when it came down to it, after the question and answer period, they had a tie between Rose and I. And this, I, I don't, I don't think that's ever happened before. I don't think it has. I, I think they were, uh, that was that was a first. Also, so it was a pageant of many yeah. firsts. It was the hometown girl versus the foreigner too, mm -hmm. which was yeah. mm -hmm. the hoser. <laughs> <laughs> Are the people that like show up to these um, events? You know, like you know how you see on television, Miss America. Uh, well, it was it mostly tall club that? people. It was mostly tall club, tall club that, members. So there's and a lot of people that are in the audience yeah. and they watch you do all these things. Sure. And, mm -hmm. and they, they, they cheer everyone. I mean, you could go out there and just recite your name and they, yay, way very to go. Very supportive. Very supportive. Well, it's, it's all in conjunction with, with uh, the Tall Clubs International Yearly Convention. So all of the, the people have come in from all across North America for the convention and as part of the convention, the, the pageant is one of the, uh, one of the highlights, I think. Well, we're going to put you on the spot, Sid, and ask you, what was the final factor? Why did Rose win over you in this pageant? She well, still can't figure it out. <laughs> there's, there's some conjecture. I understand that there was some money changing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, it was, uh, She's terrible. it was, I, I have no idea. I mean, there was, there was, it was just that close. I mean, someone had to win, someone had to come in second. Actually, someone had told me that uh, it was one of the closest pageants they've had in years. It was very, very close. They had even considered flipping a coin, and then they came out and said, no, we're going to ask you another <laughs> couple of questions. I was willing to play a little one-on-one -on -one basketball, but <laughs> in heels, <laughs> in ball gown, but they wouldn't go for that. They no. didn't have the setup, but uh, it was, it was, and we were exhausted. We were yeah. absolutely exhausted. Actually, Tina, you might have noticed that we kibitz quite a bit, and that's one of the great things about this group. Um, it, the club, uh, Tall Clubs International, is for men and women, but I have found some of the greatest female friendships I've ever had. In, in the general public, when you're uh, out socially, uh, a tall woman tends to take on, um, I don't mean the masculine role, but the more dominant role, the one that holds the door open, the one that kind of protects the other girls. If you're all going out together and there's a little bit of a problem, you're the protector. When we're all together, we're all the same and we're taken for who we are, not, not the tall one or the protector. And we all are able to act a little more feminine and a little bit more relaxed and comfortable with our size, and mm -hmm. I've made some. I bet you guys really get a lot of attention when you're all together. Yeah, it's usually all the best. Walking into like a public too. establishment or something. It's and a lot of sure. fun. It's like, <laughs> uh, who are they? What, what we want to do right now is we want to take a. Uh, uh, we want to show you what the uh, the ceremony, the, uh, the pageant, the pageant, the pageant <laughs> was all about when when uh, Sid and uh, Rose were part, were competing against each other. So we're going to take a, a look at that. It's going to be about two minutes long. We'll be right back. I will bring to you shocking evidence of a conspiracy to hide women's contributions to society where the credit is falsely claimed by men. <laughs> Rose Carnt, I'm here to tell you all about my life being tall. Not short, not fat, not thin, I said tall. In other words, stretch, shorty, shrimp, Amazon beanstalk. I'm sure you've heard them all at least a dozen, dozen times. And by folks who haven't checked the mirror twice to pass a common at all. Well, it makes you wonder if they ask fat people about their weight and short people about their height. And the bald guy in the corner, why he lost his hair. Contestant number 11 from the San Francisco Golden Gate Tip Toppers, San Francisco, California, Sydney Crampton. <laughs> Contestant number 19, from the Toronto Towers Tall Club in Toronto, Canada, Rose Carndoff. The first runner up is... Sid Crampton, Miss Tall, San Francisco. Miss Tall of the National 1991 is Rose Carndoff from Toronto, Canada.
Hello, welcome back. And, and we want to ask a natural thing, Rose, is that now that you are the, uh, the crowned um, queen of Miss, you know, the Miss Tall, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. You know, just, I, I keep uh, Miss Tall, Tall International. She's a queen and she's also Miss Tall International. What does that, what does it, that entail now that, uh, that, that you've been crowned so? Well, it, uh, it's kind of exciting for me being the first actual international pageant winner, being from Canada. Um, the, uh, the, the clubs in general are all over North America, but I'm um, the first person out of the States to win, so that's kind of great. And with that in Canada, I'm trying to do some of the things that they do here, have done here in the States, like awareness for, uh, for uh, bigger clothing. We have a real problem. We have one store chain in all of Canada that we can buy tall clothing from, and it's not enough. Um, the other thing I do for Tall Clubs International is travel around to some of the various weekend events that happen with the club. We have close to 60 clubs, charter oil involved members, uh, membership members, uh, officially in our group. And I have traveled since Ju July to nine different cities to get to know the people there, to uh, do public appearances and radio inter interviews and TV interviews mm -hmm. to promote awareness that there is uh, a tall club available for I have all a quick question. Do you mm. have a full-time job aside of this? Yeah, or do I you, do. I mean, does it require that you quit when you win Miss Tall International, no. the travel? No, this is all weekend travel. It's, it's all weekend, it's so you're a busy challenge. woman. Oh, yeah, especially when I'm going from Toronto flying into California for the weekend and then have to be back bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Monday morning at That's my work. Commitment. It, it is. is. But it's one year, and it's exciting, and it's an awful lot of fun. I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't give it up for anything. Nothing. For anything. Nothing. No. Nothing. Are you single? <laughs> Not even for Sid. <laughs> I'm single. Yes. You're single too, Rose. Well, yep. it seems like after this, you probably won't. I mean, it won't be after. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be meeting so many people. Well, you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's 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 a lot of fun. The other thing that I'm doing. Um, kind of my pet project for the year, but it's not going to be a one a one time thing. I want this to be ongoing. It's a um, I founded a group called Skywriters. What it is, it's a pen pal program for tall teenagers, um, young men and young women that have reached a certain age, tends to be around puberty, that they're starting to realize they are tall. And it's n it's not just that they're tall, but it's causing problems for them. Uh, for example, I've, I've received letters from girls that are like 12, 13 years old and are already close to 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and they're teased or they don't feel like they fit in and all the boys are shorter and we also have gotten letters from, from young men as well that uh, tower over their teachers and not everyone that's tall um, when they're younger is comfortable with it. When a lot of us, I think, um, in our group have found that we've grown into our height and it's been a real advantage uh, in adulthood, in work and in, and, um, in general. But when you're younger, if you're different in any way, if you're the shortest or if you're a little overweight or you're the tallest, being different is very difficult. So what we're trying to do is match these young people up with each other you know, have somebody from here in San Francisco write to somebody in Boston that has the same kind of background, height, interests. And then if uh, any of these young people feel they'd like an adult to write to, perhaps they come from a, um, a, a less tall family. They don't quite fit into their family structure. I think Sid and I are lucky that we've both come from tall family backgrounds to have that support. But they, um, uh, we're, we're offering them the, the uh, chance to to write to somebody older who's been through it, who can assure them that, yes, the boys will grow up. Um, your feet won't always seem that big to you. Um, little things that will just uh, help them through the rough spots. It sounds like you guys have had a lot of communication. You didn't just meet during this pageant, yes, right? Yes, we did. Oh, you did? Yeah. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> because how would you get other people from all across the nation to um, write to these people? I mean, you would select from your group alone or from different parts of the country? Or? No, the, uh, the Skywriters um, central box uh, number is in Canada, Ontario, um, near the, the, uh, the nation's capital in Ottawa. And from anyone that writes to me at that address, I will take the information. Hopefully, they will send along their name, address, um, their height, their age, some of their interests, maybe the school grade, some of the problems they're running into, if there's any physical problems involved, like Marfans or anything else. And I will take that information and try to match, match them up with somebody that they will enjoy writing to. Do we have age. that address that our yeah. viewers could write to? If you're, it, it was being posted as, she, as, Great. as Rose was talking. Great. So. And, okay. uh, and I'll, I'll respond as, as, as well as I can to uh, any inquiries I get. I'm, I've uh, written to Ann Landers and Dear Abby, and I'm hoping that they'll oh, be printed right. there and, and we'll have lots of people to match up. So. 
kind of exciting. We've just got a couple minutes left, and I want to just ask you in a nutshell if, if, if there's some viewers out there that are a little concerned about their height. But, you know, one thing is that you, you both, and Susan as well, carry yourselves very, very well. And, You've uh, got to understand, this is not a group of whiners. Yeah. I mean, we're not complaining about our height, you know, and we're not complaining about the, uh, uh -huh. the difficulties that we may uh, encounter because there's a lot of pluses. I would say far more pluses being tall sure. than there are minuses. And so it's, it's just something, a, a way of finding a camaraderie and finding friendships among people that well, you share something that's really basic to your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's great. And these people are a lot of fun. It's, it's nice to just have a group that you have something in common with, yeah. whether it's Shriners or, or Knights of Columbus or, yeah. or being tall. It's nice to have other people that you have something in common with. Tina, what are we going to do? I mean, uh, I don't know. Let, let's all stand up here for a minute just agree. to see how, yeah. how tall these ladies are. Well, I'm 5'3 and I have heels on. <laughs> there you go. I'm in the so. hole here. Huh? There you go. There we go. Well, why don't we close with the sponsors, Brian? Right? Okay. Well, we have, we have, well, I'll tell you what. We'll close <laughs> this way. Uh, anyway, we want to thank you for joining the show t uh, tonight and hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, they'll be in the credits. Uh, or if you'd like to write a letter, they'll be in the credits as well. Next week, we're interviewing Santa Claus. Yes, we are. That'll be on the 23rd. Uh, Santa Claus will be with us. Otherwise, uh, Tina Haynes and Brian Stecky. Signing off.